Join us at the Visionary Hotspot Talk Radio to empower your evening. Every Thursday, 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Real talk for real women, all with you in mind. So join the conversation. Call in at 347-989-8564. everyone to the video exchange at TheVisionaryWoman.com. Today we have with us Perry Jones Grossman. Hi, Perry. How are you? Oh, I'm so great. And I'm so excited to be talking to you, Charmaine. We've been trying for like a couple years. Yeah, I Finally. know, right? It's been forever in <laughs> a day. So today, ladies, we are going to talk, we're talking about living out your life's purpose is not a, is not a sprint. It's a marathon. Perry, tell me, why is this conversation so near and dear to you? Oh, my gosh. You know, we all are still a work in progress. I mean, Shereen, I'm in my 50s, and I feel like I've completely gotten a beginner's mind again. It's like I thought I knew things, and as I, you know, get older a little bit, like, oh, my gosh, I don't know anything. And it's, and it's really taking time. You know, taking time to learn something, it's also where you're at in your life, whether you're open to learning new things or not. Um, Taking time to breathe and just be, not constantly be like that hamster on the wheel where you're just running around and running around, you know, like a sprint and doing it more as a marathon. You just take your time. You know, you give yourself permission to take time and take that breath and just say, hey, you know what? I've got all the time in the world. Why am I in such a hurry? So I didn't learn that, though, until about two years ago. And it's made a big, big difference in my life and how I show up as a mother, how I show up with my friends as a girlfriend, um, you know, even as a, uh, with my boyfriend. I know, got a new boyfriend. <laughs> uh, in every area of my life. So it's, it's really helped me relax more and just take my time. You know, I think, too, a lot of times we are so eager. We are so excited for what we see in our futures that we're just ready to kind of dive in head first and and just live in that experience. And what we don't realize is preparation means everything. Preparation means everything. Because I can't bake a cake without instructions. I can try I don't necessarily know how it'll turn out, but if we are prepared for our destinies and our purpose, wouldn't you say that the outcome to the recipe would be much better? I I agree. And, you know, it goes back to, like I said, taking time. I mean, I take time for self-care. I take time to read. I take time to meditate. I I take time to listen to teachers that, you know, really uh, inspire me on some some iPod casts. I think preparation is really important. You know, it's something that is a discipline. And so when you do get that idea or that inspiration of a new project or new business or whatever, you know, we're out there creating in life, if you take that time and you are prepared, then you will get success, right? Because you have honored yourself. You've honored a client. You've honored your business anybody like that because you have taken the time to to learn and to create new things and by the way it's it's a constant learning process i mean i'm learning something new every single day um and i think one of the pieces that that i like to share about that has been amazing i'm sure you guys have all heard about law of attraction and and what we you know can manifest well i i take it up a step through spiritual psychology And it's co-creating. So how do we co-create and manifest our life or an event or a project or a job or a love affair, you know, whatever that is, how do we co-create with the energy that, you know, for me, it's God, it's God energy. For other people, it could be something else. But it's taking that time to connect 
with that energy, with that source, you know, and then it ignites something inside you. And then when you're in that zone of you're just been told what that project is or whatever it is that brings that passion up for something, you know, it just opens up and you just fly. But that takes preparation beforehand. Um, there's a difference when, when you know that this is something that you're supposed to do and when the doors open naturally, you know, yes. you kind of download, I call it, from spirit above and then get that download and just seems like every step you make, the doors just open up. You meet the right people, a lot of synchronicity. Yes. But if I haven't prepared and I'm not open and my heart's not open and clear, to what spirit's trying to say to me, doors shut. I spend more time trying to, you know, bash walls open, open up anything that I possibly can, and it's a clear no. Wow. And, so, and when that happens, I sit back and I think, all right, that was my ego, wasn't it? That was clearly my ego. Boy, that's humbling. And, and I go back and I, I, you know, rethink it. I look at what I didn't do to prepare for the marathon. As you say, I was just preparing for that sprint, but the marathon is what really counts and what can really make new, uh, greater things happen in the world. And I know all of us women like to do that. Wow. You know what's so fascinating is because when you mentioned about being prepared for the marathon, yeah. I think sometimes because we have grown up in a very microwave generation, yeah. uh, so I'm only 32. I'll be 33 next month. I don't even know what it feels like to not have what I want when I want it right now. I need it. I got to go get it. I got to figure it out. And I think my children, their generation is worse because yes. my kids, you know, they don't understand life with a VCR where you actually yes. had to rewind it to actually get to the point of the beginning. My kids only know DVDs and, and, and Blu-rays, so they just press a button and they go directly to where they want. So how do we start realizing that those are some of the things that were in our past or came from our past that actually were great ways to prepare us? It's called patience. It's yes. a huge virtue. Um, yes. Making sure that we understand that preparation requires patience. How do we start going, moving and growing from there? I agree. I, I think we're a friend of generation. Uh, we want instant gratification. We want it now. We want everything. And everything is at our fingertips. You know, like you said, you push a button, you go online. I'm, I mean, how many times I, I'm guilty too. I'll be out at dinner with a friend and we'll, we'll forget what the name of something was or who is connected. What do we do? We whip out our phones. Yep. We Google it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, we, and we go for that. Um, I've been trying, my kids are on their phones constantly. And so we're trying some new things where I literally say, okay, we're at dinner, we're with people, we want eye to eye contact, all the phones, stack them in the middle of the table, middle of the dinner table, whoever reaches for it, you buy dinner. <laughs> That's it. You buy dinner. And I've noticed it takes a while. It takes about 10 minutes for all of us to kind of, you know, get off the phones and, and really reconnect on a soul to soul level. Um, but it's a practice, Charmaine. I mean, it's really a practice. And it's, it again goes back to, do you want to sprint in life or do you want to have a marathon in life? You know, do you want greater results to stay with you, which takes time and patience and discipline? Or do you want the quick fix? But you know what? We all learn by pain in our lives, right? We have painful experiences. And when you're dealing with painful experiences, you need to have the discipline and the tools to because when you have experienced something that really just hits your soul, you know, and a lot of people out there are in pain and they don't know what to do and they try to go for a quick fix, but those things don't work. Those type of quick fixes don't really do the deep healing. So the more that you can prepare and learn those tools and techniques for the marathon run, when you have those, you know, I call them opportunities, soul growth opportunities, then you're prepared. But um, you got to take time to do it now. And, I, and I, I tell a lot of my friends, I said, you know what, don't wait till you have something bad happen. Start doing it now. 
Start doing it when you're, when you're happy, things are good. Learn how to take time for yourself and self-care. You know, what does that look like? Because those tools you're going to need when you least expect it. Oh, my God. You, you couldn't have hit that on the head any better than what, the way you said it. Because I'm not kidding. I have found that in the last three years, let's see, Isaac is eight years old. So let's say the last five years. I have been in a marathon, finishing up my bachelor's, jumping into my master's, homeschooling my four children. I had to hire someone to, to help me because that wasn't something I was used to. I never had to have help to help me with my, my family because I've always been a very hands-on person. I call it a little bit controlling, but that's like being a little bit pregnant. It's either you are or you're not. Right. right. So, and so releasing some of those responsibilities that I'm not really used to and then the pain of I would say the pain of recognizing what I thought I was going to start my life out to be and then jumping into my purpose because oh. that is a, a huge difference I would yes. just to be a psychologist that yes. is what my degree is in I have a bachelor's of science in psychology I'm studying the prefrontal cortex and then all of a sudden I started getting clients and it was like no, this is not going to work. Hearing people's problems all day um, and you're not willing to do it because I'm a very hands-on, let's go, let's figure it out, let's get it done. Yeah. And then no one was getting the help that they was needing and I noticed it was a waste of my time. So then I started going into the area of something I told myself when I was 18. Literally. I said when I was 18, I said, I am going to be a writer. I am going to be in the media and I'm going to change the world and I can see me sitting in a smoke-filled cafe in Paris, just watching the world go by and writing. And wow. that is where my life ended up right back in. Now I'm writing with the United Nations. I'm writing for the Huffington Post. Things are just blooming in that way. So how do we start recognizing, as you mentioned, what it is that we thought we wanted and then jumping into our purpose? Yeah, I, I, you said it. You said it first. You went for passion. You know, that's the first question to ask. You know, I, I was working with Kevin Hines and his team here, as, as you know, uh, on an event. And he said something to me that has stayed with me. He said, there's two important days in our life, the two most important days. One is our birthday. And the second day is when we find out why we were born. And that's the passion and purpose, you know? And it might not be, we might not know exactly what it is in our 20s or 30s or 40s, or maybe you do, but it's always following your heart, Charmaine, is what I've learned. And that passion comes from within. And I, I you know, I do a simple exercise when I'm talking to people and they're like, well, what is my passion? I don't really know what it is. And I'm trying to find my happiness. And, you know, like the happiness is outside of themselves. <laughs> I stop and I say, you know, if you close your eyes and just take a moment, take about 10 minutes, maybe you need some music going on in the background, and just touch into that happy place, right? Where you remember something, some memory where you were really happy and joyful, and tap into that emotion. And then in your mind, with your thoughts that goes from your heart, start thinking about what would you be doing right now to bring you that kind of joy and that kind of happiness. What is that? You know, for, for me, I saw for you being in Paris in the cafe and writing, you know, that was a very powerful emotional piece that connected within yourself, connected with spirit outside and said, I want to start writing. That's what I want to do. That's my joy. So you follow your passion. You follow and ask yourself the question, what really makes me happy? Yes. You know, um, for me, it's, it's helping people. It's really being in service um, is my greatest joy. When I can see a transformation in somebody who was maybe lost or maybe they had some things inside they needed to heal and you see their light come back on and their eyes open and their hearts are ignited. And I swear that's like the best, you know, beauty secret. They lose yeah. 10 years off their face because they've healed on the inside. I experienced it myself. Um, and it, it's interesting you brought up psychology because 
I just finished my getting my master's in spiritual psychology at uh, University of Santa Monica. And I get asked the question a lot, what is the difference between spiritual psychology and psychology? So what I've learned, if you look up the word psyche, it means breath or soul. And you look up psychology, and that means of mind and science. So it's like, well, wait a minute. What, what happened to the psyche part of this? So what spiritual psychology has done is they've connected the two. They've put the soul back into the science of mind and matter. So now you're healing. You're not just putting a Band-Aid on a label with yourself, you know, or I'm, I'm codependent or I'm, you know, kind of that's just who I am. I'm all these different labels. It's like, no, those are coping mechanisms. That's not who you really are. What your soul is, your spirit is, is light and radiance. So we go in and we do spiritual psychology surgery. It's like we go in and say, what is it that's keeping you from finding your passion, from finding your happiness and your radiance? And let's go in there, you know, and heal that part. And then you don't have to wear those labels anymore because then you can go back to who you're originally supposed to be, you God created, right? And that's that happy, beautiful, radiant woman who shines. Ladies, join us as we continue to talk about how we can be enlightened and filled with radiance after this next commercial break. The visionarywoman.com. Watch our host of insightful video exchange interviews. Listen to the Visionary Woman Hotspot Talk Radio to empower your evenings and read fascinating articles of inspiration and perseverance, all with you in mind. Visit us on our social media handles, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Hello, hello, and welcome everyone back to the Visionary Hot Spot Talk Radio. And we are here with Carrie Jones Grossman, and we are talking about life is not a sprint, but a marathon. Wow, I love that. You know what I love also about the idea of living in a radiance? We don't realize how radiance, we say those words and we use these affirmations, but that is a major deal for me because living in a radiance, you're living in a, a divine light. Living in that divine light is very important because, you know, we have become such a PC society. We don't want spirit to touch anything. Yeah. Because of the fear of offending someone. But what right. we don't realize is that is the driving force within us. That can, Listen, have you ever heard someone, and I have witnessed this with my own two eyes. I know a person who said they don't believe in God, they don't believe in spiritual anything. The wife had a terrible car accident. This particular person was in the hospital. We went up there to visit. And I saw them in the corner. And I just, you know, went to console them. And come to find out they were praying. I said, now, wait a minute. I yeah. thought you said that you didn't believe in the Lord. Now, what is going on here? Yeah. And, and, and then what I loved was the answer that he gave me. He said, Charmaine, I have nothing to lose. And I will know right now if there is a God. because It will, it will come to deliver me because I'm in such turmoil. And his wife pulled through great. And he, you know, he has a very um, strong spiritual sense about him. So it's not a Jesus thing. And it's not yeah. a, 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 you know what I'm saying? This is a spiritual connection this man has. Yeah. So how do we yeah. tap into that? You, you know, what everybody can believe in, and, and, and it's all terminology, right? And, and so we use, I use spirit a lot, the word spirit. Just because... We are spiritual beings having a human experience, right? When you see a body, that soul is gone, right? That essence of that person is gone. You just have the shell left. So we can all believe and agree that we have souls. We, we are made up of a spirit. And whatever you believe after life or an existence, whether it's God, energy, whatever, the mountains, it doesn't matter. It's the source that's outside of yourself that's greater than yourself and that you connect to. You know, there's people that have a beautiful relationship with nature. That's their yeah. spirit. That's their battery. 
And I, I don't judge that. I don't judge what anybody's, you know, outside spiritual uh, battery is. It's not my business. What's right. most important is that they realize it and they can connect to it and that they get re-energized and they live the, li- the happy and the joyful life that they were meant to be living, right? That's, that's the secret. And I, it's important that people ask those deeper questions. And when I see someone who's, who's living a tormented life, it just seems like they can't get a break, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They lose a job, they lose a relationship or something, and they think, why does, why does this happen to me? Why does life happen to me like this? And I ask a simple question. Is like, why are you, the question to ask is maybe, why are you calling that in? Mm. You know, that energy in. Wow. And it, it goes back to the discipline of your thoughts. Your thoughts become your words. Your words create energy. And the life that you're living is truly co created by your thoughts wow. and your energy. Now, there's also a thing that's a soul curriculum where our souls come on the planet to learn messages and to learn things in our lives so we can advance, right? Mm-hmm. So that we're not gonna, none of us are going to have lives without pain. Mm-hmm. That's just not probable. We're here to learn, and most of our learning happens through pain. It's what you do with it. How do you handle it? How do you go through it and grow and come out on the other side, you know, stronger and greater and more radiant? That's, that's the key. Wow. And, it, and it's, I've, I've worked with a lot of people who are agnostics, you know, and atheists, but we could at least come to terms with they have a soul. And when you connect to that, that's when it really comes alive. And that, there's tools and techniques that you can come to that, that I, we call it the inner counselor, you know, the inner counselor within us. We really have all the answers within us, Charmaine. We really do. We just have to clear out the, the old baggage, clear out the ego, and really just connect with that wise sage that each person has on this planet. Wow. You know what's crazy, too, is because when you were talking about um, our, our lives come in alignment and they come to collaborate with pain a lot of times to also teach us lessons. I find that to be the most realistic observation for me and my life because i swear every time i turn if there is some door that is closing in my face two things has have come to a realization a that the heavenly father is not telling me no he's saying this is not good enough reach higher reach bigger dream bigger do greater or if it's close, he's saying also, I'm protecting you from this yeah. thing because it's here to bring you harm. And it's going to cause you more of a problem than you can realize. And so how do we start recognizing the spiritual signs that are all around us? Because I'm not kidding. I learned from my two-year-old. I learned from my 13. I learned from literally, we live in Tennessee. I mean, you, just, you don't get any more beautiful than Tennessee other than Sun Valley. And when you're sitting here, <laughs> when you're sitting here, and I have hummingbirds that literally come to my hand, and mm-hmm. they just sit and they look at you, and you you have a beautiful view of the mountainside here in Tennessee. I wondered to myself, how do we start saying, okay, I need to tune in to the signs that are around me that are coming to give me a message? Yes. Well, you're looking through your soul-centered eyes. You know, when you're noticing things and and that goes back again to healing that connection and healing that stuff inside of us to where we believe, we really believe that we are lovable, that we are good enough. And how do you get there? A lot of self-forgiveness, you know, a lot of looking at issues. When you get an upset in life, we tend to blame the other person. Well, that person got me upset and is that person, that situation and blah, 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 blah. Right? So you choose to be a victim to that, or you can choose to be empowered. Wow. And the empowerment comes when you look at a situation and you stop and you're like, wow, why am I reacting so strongly to that, to that person or what they said or the situation? 
Really look back because it's a mirror of a little glimmer of something in you that needs to be healed. And our emotions are those signposts that are saying, pay attention to this. You know, I'm upset because, because why? You know, and it's like taking a deep breath and thinking, okay, why, why is that triggering me? And really do kind of a self-analysis, you know, where you say, I'm going to take responsibility for my life. And it's interesting how you can turn those things around. Instead of me, I had a situation with my mom. We did not have a good relationship growing up. Um, there was a lot of reasons that I could, you know, say to you why I didn't have a good relationship. And you'd agree with me. I could build a great case, right? The problem was I held so much anger and so much grief that it was really affecting me more than it was her. She was, she already processed herself. She was a different person back when I was a young child to who she is now. But I hadn't processed it. So the minute I processed that and I came to a true, powerful forgiveness for her, then I was able to love others and look at others without judgment. But I got to tell you, it, it, it really does start with us. When we're judging others, when we're getting mad <clears throat> at others, what we're really doing is we're judging ourselves for something. We're not, not loving ourselves. We're, we're hating on our own selves. So you, you have to just take that step back and go, why am I, what do I really believe about myself? And those are the deep questions that start that healing process. So then you can look through what we call soul-centered eyes. Then you see the world a different place. Instead of it being dark and bleak and impossible, I, I, I can't do this, I can't do that. How many times do people say that? I can't, I can't, I can't. So the universe hears that and goes, okay, you can't. And then you're sitting there thinking, well, what, what if I changed it and said, I can, I can, I can, I can, like the affirmations you were talking about. And you'd be surprised how the energy can shift and come back and the universe goes with you and says, all right, we can, let's do it. When you, let's just take an event. You know, I do events around the nation and I think about, you know, how much I want to do it and I start acting on it and, and with that comes a lot of responsibility, comes a lot of diligence, comes a lot of discipline. And there's times I flat out don't want to do it. I get upset. You know, or someone's not doing what I said that I asked them to do. You know, people aren't showing up or something goes wrong, right? Do I say, well, I'm not going to do this event. Forget it. I'm not going to do it. It's too hard. Well, if you keep doing that, what you're really saying is that I'm not good enough to do it. That's the real truth, is I'm not good enough. I don't feel strong enough. I'm living in fear. So when you start finding yourself pulling away from something that, that did bring you great joy and you wanted to do, really look at it. What is it inside of you that really believes that you can't do it? You know, it's a, it's a real inner um, questioning that's important. Wow. Perry, when we get ready to join you, we want to come to your events, honey. We want to look you up. We want to find you. How do we do that? Well, you know, we have one event that's coming up, the Sun Valley Wellness event, which is our 20th year anniversary. And Ariana Huffington is going to be our keynote speaker. Um, it's going to be amazing in Sun Valley. And you can go to, uh, go to sunvalleywellness.com. Uh, and I have all the information, tickets, and how you can get there. And then my, I also have my website, which is perryjonesgrossman.com. And that's also listing some things that are up and coming events, more quotes, more blogging, things that, you know, things that I've learned, quite frankly, and that I get so excited about and I see changes in my life. And I want to share it with other women, I mean, other people. And I love doing that, Charmaine love empowering particularly women you know something you said earlier and I, I i have to bring this back a little bit remember how powerful the women's marches were done yeah you know for, for the political world and how they realized with one voice they could make a difference but with even more of a community that we're even stronger and having our voices be heard it's the same thing 
You know, you start out with being true to yourself, being authentic, and your sisters start looking at you and going, well, I want to be authentic. I want my voice to be heard. Pretty soon you start building up a community, and that's your tribe. You know, so when you need help, when you need support, when you need love, we are a community. This, this is not the, the new year of saying, hey, it's all about me. I want to figure out, you know, how much I can get in life and how much my ego can get all this stuff. No, we are a time of community. We are a time of tribe. And our voices are stronger, our intentions are stronger, and I think greater works happen from us as women as we collectively come together as sisters and move forward and make the world a better place. Oh, wow. Perry, thank you so much for joining me. It has been so amazing having you here with us today. Remember, everyone, you can always reach me at thevisionarywoman.com or Charmaine at thevisionarywoman.com. I am on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. I am absolutely everywhere. We'll talk with you soon. Bye.